Welcome to today's edition of Tech Tuesday by Folsom University. Today's discussion, women in tech, the women powering the tech industry. I'm Dr. Holly Ludgate, Director of Learning for Emerging Technologies at Folsom University. And I am Dr. Haifa Mamar, uh, Education Director for Emerging Technologies at Full Sail Universities. We have a great panel today of Full Sail University graduates. Welcome, everyone. So uh, today we have um, Emily Kenneth, who is a software engineer three at Equisoft, Tatiana Kerrick, who is a UI designer at Masonite, and Vaishan Po who is a producer at Paradox Interactive. I'd like to ask each of you to give us a few words of introduction and tell us what you are working on. So let's start with you, Emily. Hi, um, so my name is Emily. Um, as mentioned, I'm a software engineer at AccuSoft currently. I work on our PrismDoc um, product group. So I personally work on a small team of engineers building a web-based document um, and collaboration tool. Thank you. And what about you, Tatiana? Hi. Um, so I'm a UI designer at Masonite, and I'm currently working on the emerging technology team that's, you know, basically bridging the gap between technology contractors and homeowners and their doors. And I'm working on several projects, like ongoing projects on the team. And one of the coolest ones is actually working on an interface that can control your smart door. Thank you, Tatiana. And what about you, Vashant? Uh, yes, so uh, my name is Vashan. I am a producer at Paradox Interactive, where I work as uh, leading the project for development for uh, Hearts of Iron 4, which is a World War II uh, simulation video game. Thank you everyone for your amazing introductions. And we're gonna go over a few questions in the first 30 minutes, and then we're actually gonna to go to questions from the audience. So if you're watching either on YouTube or Facebook, send your questions in and we're gonna get those directly to our panelists today. So let's dive right in. So what is your role currently? And what would you say the percentage of females is at your company, specifically in maybe the tech department? How about we start with you, Emily? All right, so um, my current role is I'm a software engineer three. So I work on a group, uh, my team is three, uh, two at development, <laughs> engineer and test. So I am one of three females in the engineering side at my company of about 200 employees. Um, we have plenty of women on the ex executive side and the HR and the marketing department. Um, and then we, I also work with a fellow woman technical writer. It's wonderful to hear that you have so many females providing influence within your organization. That's excellent. So what about you, Tatiana? How about, how about the females in your industry? Um, well, I really only get to connect with people on my immediate team, especially being virtual, but there are a handful of women that I work with directly. And from my understanding, um, I know that the company itself went under a lot of business restructuring and, you know, they kind of chased away, not chased away, but, you know, really took um, an internal look on, you know, how the internal politics and, you know, where they want to be socially, um, you know, aligned with like business values. So um, they actually put in a lot of effort to kind of like make that uh, field like level open. But um, as far as I know, I think it's actually split pretty evenly of men and women who work at this company. And would you say you can tell a difference with more of a split versus one being heavier, maybe male or female within an organization? Can, can you feel that at all with decisions? Um, because I've only been working um, remote since I've, you know, been at this company uh, due to COVID. I'm actually not entirely that sure, but I know that the structure on my team directly is, you know, it, it's very like everyone has a space and has an opinion and everybody listens to it. Everyone values that. That's very exciting to hear. We need more of that everywhere. Definitely. How about you, Vishan? 
All right, so um, we have uh, studios all, all across the world. I'm currently in the Stockholm, Sweden office. Uh, and uh, we have about a, I think it was 66% ma uh, male, 34% uh, uh, female. Uh, and uh, our CEO is a woman, our uh, COO is a woman, and uh, it's, a, it's a very welcoming environment. Um, we have quite a few women on the floor, production uh, artists, um, and engineering side, I think we have about five uh, in the Stockholm office. I'm not sure about the other studios. Um, but yeah, we have a, we have a pretty healthy, uh, healthy uh, female community or women community. That paradox. And have you noticed that within some of your other positions at other organizations that have a pretty good split? Um, in some, yes. Uh, Sony Santa Monica had a very nice split. Um, uh, EA Tiburon, as it's the sports section of uh, of EA, was was definitely uh, male dominated. But uh, it was I can't say any of them ever really been unpleasant. So yeah, that's great to hear. Thank you. It's really um, interesting and exciting to know that, especially for you, Vashon, how um, lots of game studios, lots of studios are, um, they have that presence um, of female. Um, one question I'm always um, tempted uh, to ask when I see women in tech, uh, and we know that, again, from Tatiana and from Emily, we're, there isn't a lot of women in tech. Um, but what got you interested in technology? Let's start with that. Um, so let's start with you, Emily. Okay. Um, so I feel like I was always kind of drawn to it, um, being born a little bit before 2000, um, still pretty young. And so I kind of grew up, I grew up with a computer in the house and I was always really big into like TV. And I remember I would just sit sometimes and like type because I liked the sound of the keyboard. <laughs> and um, so I was always kind of drawn to it, but what really got me into it was high school, taking um, design classes and programming classes and just kind of following that interest kind of all the way to the end. It's interesting how you started that early. Holly and I always talk about that, how when we want to have female in tech, we need to start way early. Like you're talking high school, middle school. I'm like always thinking of elementary school. You need to talk to girls in elementary school and get them to learn programming or get interested into that problem solving. Right. So I was always that kid who wanted to stay inside during recess um, to like play extra on the computer or something like that, um, just because it was always something that I found really engaging and always kept my brain going. And um, so I think I was just always naturally kind of drawn to it. Interesting. I was, I was that kid too. And then uh, Tatiana, what about you? What got you interested in tech? Um, Honestly, MySpace, um, when that was the primary social media tool, it gave you an ability to create your own layout um, or basically, you know, decorating your own profile page. So I actually taught myself basic HTML and CSS and, you know, made some, um, I wouldn't say the most user friendly interfaces, but it was definitely something that drawn me to the tech industry or, you know, just to tech in general. So. Um, from the air, I kind of just like blasted through every tech and design and art course that I could in high school. And um, I was pretty much like heading on my way. It was it basically, I understood to myself that it was Full Sail or no other school. Cause you know, in where I came from, um, you know, most of the schools, like they were talking about technology and, you know, web design and you know, just like development in general in a way that was actually like 10 years, like way in the past, or, you know, just like not up to date, whereas Full Sail was very adamant of, you know, expressing that they're just, they try to keep up with the industry so that when you graduate, you can actually use your skills in the industry right away, so. Interesting, and uh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I went to a traditional school and I, I didn't have that much applied or hands-on activities at what we do at Full Sail. Uh, so I totally understand when you say that you saw yourself at Full Sail and this is how, um, uh, I mean, you got interested in technology. What about you, Vashan? 
Uh, yes, so um, I have been a gamer since I was four years old. Uh, my dad bought me a game system. Um, and so I've always loved math and um, the programming classes that I had in school and, and playing video games. So I've always been really drawn to technology and I'm, I'm a science and math nerd. Um, so yeah, it's I, I've changed my major a couple of times in college and then ultimately decided that yeah I want to I want to make video games so um, that's basically what I did. So when you say you change your major, what other programs did you go to? Was it that full cell or um, uh, no? So programs. Um, I originally entered college as a psychology major um, and was going to wanted to be a forensic psychologist, uh, but um, I decided that I didn't want to you know. I wanted to be able to wake up and do something that I actually enjoy. And my passion has always been video games. So uh, I made that switch. Interesting. And I think a, a trend we see here is um, problem solving women. This is how like they get attracted into technology. And one thing um, uh, I love from Emily is that actually we should start early. Uh, and everyone actually, <laughs> like yeah, Vashon said, she started at four. Tatiana was like also started really early. Emily also started really early, early programming and learning video games or uh, other problem solving skills. Or so um, yes, I agree. Um, if if you're interested in technology uh, or programming specifically, um, and I I think this is more for like students or even parents or other people there like we should start really early um, and get um, get interested into the tech field. Holly. I also think it's important that we see more females representative within the industry and so I know for high fun I it's really important that we can be involved and show that there are females and to be able to have you all on this panel today to show that there's women out there doing amazing things, I think is so important for the youth today to see that they need representation in it too, because it helps make better technology for our future. So uh, the next thing I wanted to know is, um, what mentors did you have growing up that led you to your career today? Um, for me personally, uh, I had a lot of mentors uh, and um, I know the impact they can do on your education or on your career. So I wanted to know if you ladies got any, um, any similar experience if you had mentors uh, during your education or your career. So let's start with Tatiana. Um, I guess life was a really significant mentor. Um, I had a really strong desire to change my circumstances, especially like in life and from like a financial situation. Um, so I don't know, I had a lot of encouraging teachers when I was in high school, um, especially because my inner mythology of creating chaos is basically like these rules are kind of stupid, so I'm gonna do whatever. So I've been fortunate to have teachers that did encourage that. Um, of course, the instructors and lab instructors that were at Full Sail that, you know, helps me out a lot and helps me like actually learn these things. And one of the more significant was, um, he's actually a course director at Full Sail now, but we graduated at the same time. And, you know, he was, uh, his name is uh, Joseph uh, Cavagna. And it, basically had to instill a lot of real life lessons. Um, but, you know, it was definitely there to kind of help me like figure out what this stuff was. Like I really struggled through the programming classes because, you know, initially my objective was to become a designer. Um, so, but, you know, because of those things it actually made me a more well-rounded designer. Like I can actually talk to, um, you know, the developers and engineers that I have worked with throughout my, you know, ex experience and, you know, yeah. <laughs> I love the point you're making, Tatiana. Yes, I agree. Even though if you're just, you're a designer, you're probably going to work with programmers and you need to know how to talk to them and what yeah. 
how, how to talk their language, I think I mean. So uh, yes, and life, yeah. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> what about you, Vatan? Um, I'd say my my dad, um, like through my younger years and through my whole life, obviously, um, has always been like my my strongest mentor and has always supported me in in my academic pursuits and and uh, career choices. Um, for school, I'd say uh, in my undergrad, so I have a programming degree for my bachelor's. Uh, my master's degree was from Full Sail for the game design master's. Um, and my biggest mentors, I say, in college were uh, Louis Reichenbach and Chris Hengler from my undergrad at Westwood. Those are my programming teachers who really, uh, really motivated me to to continue along the game development career and uh as for grad school i'd say rupert uh rupert mcnaught who was a full sale instructor um was honestly a great uh, a great motivator and, and mentor and really prepared me for being a producer and the project management side of things and um i've t i took a lot of the knowledge that he instilled in me uh, forward and it's been really really helpful Thank you, Vashon. I agree with you. For me, my mentors, of course, my parents. Uh, my dad introduced me to gaming early too. And my mom was always um, supportive and guiding me through that whole uh, journey. So I agree. What about you, Emily? So um, it's actually funny that Tatiana also got to work with Joe because he was really involved with my program as well. Um, being a web development, um, graduate he was sort of he was in all of our labs um we had such a small class that like he specifically was like kind of checking in with us making sure taking our opinions on what we thought about the coursework and all of that so that was always really like a like a um, reliable um guy to like <laughs> to conf um can wow what's the word confide in there we go <laughs> um but i also um in high school I had a web uh, development instructor who actually like helped me start a club at school that I got to run and kind of organize myself um, for web design people. Um, so that was really fun. And having her there through high school while I was applying to AccuSoft was super, super helpful um, and super motivating. And from since leaving Full Sail, I have found mentors everywhere. <laughs> um, I always like to try to find um, a company or a job or an environment where I feel um, close to my coworkers. It's really important for me to have that sense of community with them. And so at every job that I've had since graduating, I've always found um, at least one person that can kind of be like my confidant, <laughs> um, can be like my person that I go to when I'm having a bad day or um, can just kind of like, sort of like rubber duck problems with. Um, so I think that for anyone going into the industry, it's important that you should always like I always think that you should try to strive to find mentors in every step that you take along the way. Excellent advice, Emily, I agree with you. Um, definitely, whether you're working uh, like at a game studio, any software company, wherever it is um, that you're doing, you definitely need mentors. Uh, they will help you and guide you through uh, through uh, everything. I know for me, I have a mentor still to this day, and I just enjoy bringing so many different perspectives to help shape and help me grow in the future. So it's wonderful knowing that all of you have had mentors and you still look to mentors to help you continually grow too. I think it's an important part of the evolution of our growth. So we've had a lot of great questions already from YouTube and Facebook, so keep them coming. We're going to start those questions soon. But I want to ask the panel, so did you always know that you wanted to work in technology? And it sounded like many of you didn't just randomly fall into it, like you were driven to it. But I'm curious, was there a moment or an experience that really triggered your decision to move into this tech world? Let's start with Vashon. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I, I changed my major a couple of times, um, and uh, I think my turning point was during one of my psychology classes where it's just you read all of these cases and and um, 
all of these studies and it just kind of like I didn't want to wake up and be worried every morning and and be stressed by you know other people's traumas and and stuff like that so I um I was playing video game uh, one night after class, uh, as I always do, <laughs> um, and was like, you know, I should, I, I think I want to make video games. Like that's something that I could actually wake up in the morning and be excited to go to um, uh, every day. Um, and uh, that's like because of something my dad, you know, said to me is like, if you enjoy what you do. Um, and you wake up in the morning and go to work, you'll never actually work a day in your life. Like it's, it's, you know that's your passion. So that's what I went with. And you still feel that way? Absolutely. That's amazing. I love that. I love it. I feel the same way. Um, Emily, how about you? So I did not always see myself in this industry. Um, I always kind of saw myself actually becoming a chef <laughs> um, from like a little kid. That's what I said I wanted to do. Um, and maybe I still will someday, who knows. But <laughs> there was one moment in high school when it came around that time of like figuring out what I'm going to do. I actually had just taken a, an intro to web design class. And um, working with that teacher, I realized that I actually really enjoyed doing it. <laughs> and I was pretty good at it. So I figured I would kind of see it through. And then it really wasn't until I got to Full Sail and I was um, like immersed in all of the work that went around it. I actually also went in thinking I wanted to be a designer. Um, but as I worked in the course material, I ended up becoming more of a programmer. And then I've kind of followed that through. So it took kind of taking that leap into Full Sail to realize that like, I really do enjoy what I do. That's wonderful that you were at least open to you know, having your path take you in a different direction, but it sounds like it's done, it's been a great path for you, which is wonderful. How about you, Tatiana? Um, I knew I wanted to work in a creative field, but I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to accomplish that. I went through a lot of different ideas going from uh, fashion design to graphic design and, um, Honestly, if you would have told me a couple years ago that I would be a user interface designer, I probably would have laughed at you because the concept didn't like, I didn't even know that concept kind of existed. So um, I really was looking for something that was the middle ground between like creativity, technology, uh, psychology, because, you know, that was also some interest that I was picking up in like, why do people make the decisions that they do? And like also something that allowed me to use my unhealthy reliance of Command Z at any opportune moment. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm, it sounds like you've really found your niche of something that just blends everything together of what your passions are, which is yeah, fantastic. Pretty um, much, I lucked out. <laughs> That's fantastic. So I'll stay with you, Tatiana. What do you think is the best part of being a woman in the tech industry? Um, especially right now, because, you know, of women who have come before us that have like really kind of paved the way to for us to like have the space that we do now and especially with the um, socio political conversations that are going on like it is actually a very opportune time to speak out against things that you know usually people would just kind of brush off or just kind of accept like it's it's not enough to just kind of complacently you know uh, make things better you have to kind of be like anti-bad anti-racist anti-sexist so being able to be one of those people in the position that I am in now um, to use my voice to you know use my opinion to use my insight and everything that I've gathered over the years um, you know just being able to take advantage of you know all those things and like breaking down the boundaries because you know we're also in a time where specific roles aren't you know enforced anymore you don't have to live up to expectations you can really create your own expectations i absolutely love that how about you emily um similarly um i think that it's a unique opportunity for women going into a technology heavy field um, that they have the opportunity to kind of go into a system that has maybe old archetypes in place um, and sort of kind of instill their own change that way. Um, I know like 
specifically in development and engineering, um, unless you go to like a newer company or a company run by younger people, a lot of the people you're going to interact with are um, like in your managers and maybe even your coworkers are going to be people who were brought up in a different setting um, and have certain maybe corporate uh, structures or maybe just managerial um, types that don't really work well with like modern thinking. Um, so even if it's not even specific to being a woman, being a millennial or being part of Generation Z, being able to go into these companies and kind of, you know, rework <laughs> their system and reintroduce this new way to manage and work in an environment with these new uh, and innovative people. Yeah, I think the fresh perspective and the different lens in which you look through to be able to share and shape what's coming uh, is pretty incredible and um, a huge gift, I believe, that you all are bringing to your organizations. What about you, Vishan? Um, for me, um, I think the best part um, of being a woman in the industry, especially as a Black woman, is just the visibility and being able to inspire uh, other little girls um, to do, you know, to achieve uh, what I have and to realize that you can, you know, you can dream to be a part of technology. I mean, it is a viable career. Um, and uh, yeah, it's especially in, as uh, Tatiana mentioned, in these socio-political times, especially as a Black woman, like to have my face out there and the other, inspire other little Black girls to, to do what they want. Um, that, uh, that really makes me feel good. Absolutely. I love that. I love that the inspiration that you can bring be just being a female in the tech industry and then all the dynamics that you bring with it. Um, we have a lot of questions rolling in that I think Dr. Mamar and I really want to get to. So uh, let's start with Lynn from YouTube. Are there any women involved in the aviation tech or engineering? field within here that you guys either work with or you're actually directly involved with? Um, my company at one point, so one of the softwares that we work on, um, we have a couple SDKs. We were at one point, um, I think almost involved with Boeing. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Um, but a lot of our technologies are actually in um, like x-ray machines, which I think is really uh, kind of exciting um we have barcode software everywhere so not necessarily um aviation tech but we are an engineering and software development company located in tampa um working and creating products that are actually used in stuff that you might use every day so that's kind of cool that's great anyone else it's kind of a stretch i just thought i'd i'd see for me, it's actually like I feel so proud when I hear like females in these engineering mechanical aviation uh, fields. Uh, it's um, just like have that feeling of um, pride. Um, OK, so the second question is uh, from Catherine and she is asking she's asking what has your life been like? What has your life been like since graduating from Full Sail? So I don't know who wants to start here. So, yeah, um, it's been interesting to say the least, especially within the last year. Um, I definitely struggle to find a cultural fit for myself because I had such specific expectations going through college and, you know, kind of having those expectations uh, dissolve very quickly, um, especially, you know, just in the corporate working world and like the nine to five world. So um, I have bounced around between different jobs, um, mostly just, you know, either out of contracts ending or, um, you know, just finding that something really wasn't what I was looking for. I've, I've worked in, you know, I've used my skills in the medical insurance world, in the smart IoT lighting world, in, um, you know, business management, and now I work at a door company. So a lot of it is just, um, you know, full sale gives you the ability to kind of like keep kicking yourself, especially when you're down, but like in a good way, like motivating yourself to like have to keep going because like there really is no choice, especially like if you're 
you know, like at least like with the, the how the courses worked at Full Sail, like you didn't really have an opportune moment to give in to the things that want to beat yourself up. That's some excellent advice, actually, Tatiana. Uh, I love what you said because uh, I agree. Um, sometimes life is not always easy, and sometimes we just have to keep going, just stand up and keep going and be smart about how to use the skills or your skills. So you are a graduate from the web design and development, but actually you were able to use your skills in different industries. Yes, still within tech, but you were able to use that um, in different IoT or the medical field and uh, the insurance field. So it's very, um, Thank you for that advice. Uh, that's usually an advice I give to my gaming students where like, I usually tell them, I'm like, don't just think about the gaming industry. You are programmers, yes, with gaming experience or with gaming knowledge, but you, you are programmers, you're a software engineer. You can work in the simulation field. You can work in any other um, software companies. So don't limit yourself to gaming. Um, so yeah, excellent advice. What about you, Bashan? How is life? <laughs> <After Uh, myself? laughs> life has uh, been an adventure. I have worked at multiple companies. I got my first job directly out of uh, graduating out of Full Sail. I have been in the game industry since 2011. Um, and now I'm in Europe. <laughs> um, so yeah, life has life. been an, an interesting journey. Um, I never expected that I would be able to, you know, move across the world and, and you know, can still be doing what I love, making video games and, and take that, that experience globally. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it hasn't always been easy. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been an interesting journey so far. Thank you. What about you, Emily? Um, I mean, about the same. So I also got a job right out of college. Um, actually, I think they hired me before I graduated, but I just didn't start until the a couple of weeks after my graduation date. And um, it brought me to Tampa from Winter Park. So I've been here since. And um, but I actually was able to I only worked at my first job for about nine months before I realized that it really wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, in my industry, I was working mostly in the front end. I was just kind of making static web pages for um, various pharmaceutical companies. And it was easy work, but it was almost boring because it was so easy. Um, so I went out of my way to kind of find something else in the area that was kind of better suited to what I wanted to learn. So um, moving to the AccuSoft where I'm at now, I've been here for three years. Um, and through that, I've been able to sort of progress my way up through the ranks in the engineering field. But it, it is working. It's very, it's challenging work, um, but it's fulfilling in that way because it is difficult. And, you know, every single day I'm working on something new. Um, I'm constantly learning new things. So I guess it's been interesting <laughs> since graduating. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm happy at my current job and I think it's important to find like, like I said before, a community that you feel comfortable in and um, you should never settle <laughs> for um, anything just because, you know, if you don't like it, then what are you doing? <laughs> I would say something that I see a lot coming out of Full Sail are students and graduates have an enormous amount of grit and resilience. And I don't know if it's the grueling schedule. I don't know if the classes and the pace, you know, are, are just, they just breed that, but it's amazing to see that you guys are taking that grit and resilience and applying it in so many different ways, whether it's taking you across the world for your dream job or giving you bigger challenges or finding your fit. I love hearing all of these things. And I think that those factors play in such a huge role with that. And Haifa, I assume you see that quite a bit too with the students you interact with. I agree. I agree. Um, that's that's common in emerging tech and uh, even other programs uh, at Full Sail. And I think, I think it's the nature of our students and the nature of our schedules as well. Um, uh, so uh, they're just, they have that 
thing like they want to succeed and once you have that then you, you just keep it later in the industry um, and I loved something that Emily said was that new challenges like that's how I feel I am and like all of us like it's like just bring me new challenges I need new things and new challenges that's what keep me keeps me going um, so yeah that is the truth. Hype is like, what else can we do? We can make this better. How can we make it better? We, we love a good challenge, um, which I assume a lot of you ladies also feel the same way about. Uh, so we have a question from Jay Huey from YouTube. When did you ladies know exactly what you wanted to do? Was it before or after graduation? Let's start with Emily. Um, okay, so I knew that I wanted to be a web developer um, before I even got to Full Sail. <laughs> um, I actually went to Full Sail because it was one of the only colleges offering a degree specifically in web development. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, spend a lot of time or a lot of money on classes that I knew weren't going to help me get in the field as fast as possible, pretty much. Um, but I didn't figure out what I wanted to do in this industry until I got out in it. So I mentioned that I had a job um, right out of the bat. It was, you know, I took it without doing too many interviews because I was like a nervous college graduate, like, oh my gosh, I have to just get something. Um, and I, it took me like working in that to sort of spend some time and realize that it really wasn't what I wanted to do long term. Um, it was a good like foot in the door situation, but um, just kind of doing some self reflecting, I caught myself like reading documentation about other program pro programming languages that I wanted to work in. So um, it took like a plot looking around and applying to different companies, um, and then getting there and realizing like that's really what I like to do. Um, so I think it's important to always say like critical of your surroundings and um, kind of self aware of like where do I stand as far as my happiness level in what in the work that I'm doing in my satisfaction in that sense. That's fantastic. And Vishan, you've kind of always known you wanted to work with games, but did it change a bit once you graduated or once you got out into field to be something more specific than what it, you originally thought to be? Uh, no, uh, I went to Full Sail with the intent of being a producer. Um, I love programming. I was good at it, but I really enjoyed leading teams and, and being a producer allows me to work with so many different disciplines um, and really experience like all of the parts of, of game development. And so I, yeah, I went to Full Sail with the specific goal of, of being a producer. And uh, yeah. I, I guess I always knew. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I always knew, even at a very young age, I wanted to work in education. So it's it's interesting how my life has evolved into technology and education, but it started out just wanting to, to teach, not just just, but wanting to teach. How about you, Tatiana? Um, I went through a similar experience to Emily. I got a job right out of college. Um, I think I had like a week off between when I graduated and when I started. Actually, I think I just had a weekend off. Um, and when I went to Full Sail, I knew I wanted to be a web designer. When going through Full Sail, I started to understand that it was like front end development and back end development. I knew I wanted to stay in the front end side of things. It wasn't really until after my third job did I realize that I was probably better suited for being a user interface designer rather than a front end developer or front end de um, designer. My biggest struggle has always been kind of more that UI and front end development kind of gets mashed together. A lot of places expect this kind of unicorn that doesn't necessarily exist, especially when technology becomes or you know, programming languages or just you know, individual devices itself, they, you, they require like a niche experience. You need to have a really deep understanding of something in order to make things work really well, especially when it comes to the user experience side of things. So I went through my first job and it wasn't creative enough. I did not like that. Um, second job, and you know, it kind of goes around with you know being, aware of like your surroundings because you know my next job kind of like turned into I was just like a kind of a pixel monkey monkey for lack of a better description uh, there really wasn't any thought it was always like business requirements and it kind of wasn't really a fun place um 
you know, and, you know, even going through getting my first gig has specifically a user interface designer that came with their own, my own uphill battles. And I think that especially stems from trying to find a job when I did not have my own personal values intact or defined because it kind of allowed me to be overworked. It allowed me to not accept, you know, the good things that I was doing or the good things that I was bringing to my team. And it left me really burnt out for a while. So, um, you know, and like every day, kind of still have to like remind myself, like, why am I a user interface designer? Why am I doing this? Why am I going to work every day? And it's a lot easier to motivate yourself with those things if you have, you know, some kind of values behind it. I love that you brought that up. I think that is so critically important. And many times we can just end up, as you said, a pixel monkey, just going to work and doing it day after day, and you lose your sense of purpose. And, mm -hmm. and if you don't have those values behind you, I think that it's hard to kind of recalibrate yourself and where you need to be and, and where you want to go. So it's awesome to hear that you're really, truly focused on staying within your lane of values and not deviating from it. Um, I love that. I think that's just really important for success. Um, so it leads me to a question um, that also is from uh, Jay Hugh on, on YouTube. And we can stay with you, Tatiana. Um, this person's curious about the support system of your company they have for upper, underrepresented demographics at your organization. How do they support these different demographics? Um, I know that when I went through like the HR slideshow and stuff, they um, completely restructured how their HR department was done. Um, a lot of it was definitely in response to the uh, Black Lives Matter movements that were really kicking up pace uh, over the summer. Um, I haven't been here that long to really speak about that. And because I've been working remote, I don't really get to physically experience what that is like, but, you know, I do know that just, you know, with the people that I work with immediately on my team, everybody is, you know, very aware of the circumstances that are kind of surrounding us right now. And it's more that a lot of people are kind of just taken aback coming, you know, recognizing the um, positions that we're really in. But, you know, as far as the support system goes, I haven't really worked here long enough to speak for that. I'll be definitely curious. I was a bit worried when you said the HR slideshow. I'm like, no, not another HR slideshow. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that once you maybe get back into more of a face-to-face -face setting, if you notice anything, any support system. How about you, Emily? Um, so I know for a while my company, uh, and I'm still, I'm new-ish compared to somehow some of my, how long my, my employee coworkers have um, been working for Acrosoft, but I know that in the past couple months, um, we, our HR department is incredible. They are, it's a small group and you can go to them with pretty much anything and you can talk to the HR director pretty much directly over Slack or schedule a meeting and she's the warmest, most like amazing person ever. So um, having her kind of on the front lines of saying like, I need you to just let us know what you need, like rather than taking any of the initiatives to um, kind of just act without really asking first, um, they went through and they were like, I wanna reach out to these demographics and say like, what can we do for you to make like your work experience better? How can we improve? Um, that kind of thing. So I thought that that was really admirable. And we recently um, finally declared Juneteenth a company holiday. So we don't have to work on that day anymore. Um, and also Martin Luther King Day, we don't work on anymore. <laughs> um, so that's like really little things, but um, I think it's important that the companies themselves are taking the time to reach out to their employees directly rather than just throwing uh, solutions at them and like actually asking them like, what do you want from us? What do you need from us? I would even venture to say those are really big things. Uh, I'm so excited to hear that organizations that Accusoft is willing to, to take that stance and give you those those days that are very important, but it's a step in the right direction, right? I mean, they're trying. Um, how about you, Vishon? Um, I don't really know of any um, actual like support 
groups. Um, I know that the women at the company, we have our own kind of personal support group for each other. Um, but we, one of the good things about Paradox is that we are uh, unionized. We have a collective agreement uh, with the union. And so um, we do have uh, full union support for all of our employees. That's awesome. That's amazing. So, um, the, well, one comment that just came in, it's uh, from Hope on Facebook. Um, she just wants to let Vashon know that she loves her, go hard and st stand strong mindset. As we can see, um, she always plays hard to level up. Her journey over there has been one that shows never give up when your mind and heart is in the something stick with it, is into something stick with it. So that's from Hope. <laughs> And then, um, so one question actually that came from um, Dean on YouTube. He said, how do you feel Full Sail prepared you for the workplace versus perhaps a more traditional college? Uh, I don't know who wants to start. Let's start by Emily. Yeah. Um, well, I'll start. Um, hi, Dean. <laughs> Dean is actually one of my um, fellow co graduates. Um, we graduated in the same class. So I feel like um, Full Sail did a really, really good job at making it so that way I could graduate saying that I had experience in a bunch of different things. So I could put on my resume that I had worked in Node and I had worked in MySQL and JavaScript and all these all these different things. I got to graduate with a physical portfolio. I, had a, I have a website that's still up. Um, that I could take to my company and say, like, you know, it might not be perfect work. Uh, I am a student, but I have at least looked at and worked in all of these technologies that you use. And um, Full Sail definitely taught me to learn how to learn. <laughs> um, so something that I can feel confident walking into an interview and saying is like, even if I don't know the answers to these questions, or even if I can't, you know, exactly answer your code assessment, I can say like, I I know how to figure it out. And I don't need you to tell me how to do it. Like I can learn, I know how to learn to do it myself. Um, and I feel like Full Sail is very unique in that sense in that they gave us like kind of the surface level of a lot of different technologies and left it up to us to kind of dive even deeper, which is a critical skill in the industry because you aren't ever gonna be given like a nice list of um, exa like exactly what you need to do. Here's like, here's all the steps to solve what X, Y, Z. It's, you know, I need, I want you to build this thing, figure it out and it's due in three months. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think Full Sail versus maybe a more traditional four-year school definitely did a good job of that discipline of like, you're gonna have to just learn how to learn it because it's, it's your company is like kind of relying on you to do it. Um, and you're gonna have help, but you're not gonna have as much help as you might think. <laughs> Love that. Uh, I love how you say I learned to learn it. I like, for me, it's like learn to figure it out. <laughs> That's how uh, um, I always say, but like you definitely like for us, for students, I would say um, like we give the help in the early courses and the early classes, but then as, as they go, we want them to learn how to figure out how to ask questions to know exactly that they shouldn't be um, taken to the solution. They should figure it out and ask questions to get to that solution. Uh, what about you, Vashan? Uh, I'd say that uh, Full Sail prepared me quite well for the um, rigorous uh, development process that uh, games go through and being able to manage dependencies and coordinate a whole bunch of different, uh, a whole bunch of different disciplines and, and um, you know, deal with changes from management uh, or like, you know, this, this is changing, the design has changed and now you have to shift courses. Um, I also learned how to create my own schedule management document uh, documentation from scratch because you're not always going to be able to rely on like specific project management software. You need to know how to do all these calculations by hand. Um, thank you, Rupert. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it definitely pushed me to really drive, like Emily said, to like, I may not know how to do something, but I, I sure know how to figure out how to do it. And, and I'll come up with a solution um, because Full Sail definitely prepared me to be able to tackle any problem that I come across. 
I agree, especially in the game design masters, you deal with game developer, like game development students, bachelor students, game design students, uh, artists, game arts, um, game artists or game art students. So yeah, knowing how to talk to all these different students, know how to schedule everyone, know how to get everyone accountable and deliver. And uh, as you said, know how to work on your schedule without actually using any software. So definitely, yeah. What about you, Tatiana? Definitely learning to learn and the resiliency that, you know, comes with having to be a student at full sale with the schedule. Um, and one of the biggest things is that the way that the courses were set up for web design and development when I went through the um, program is that they run you through, you know, in the amount of like a year's worth of courses, a production line of how something would actually make its way out the door. And I think that was kind of like the biggest part of it. A lot of schools kind of neglect to reach upon the factors that actually goes into making um, software products which is, you know, where these, you know, where, where the need comes from, where does the business requirements get defined, who is organizing, how things gets done, how things get done. And that really comes down to, you know, being able to work with a team of people. And because so often a lot of projects, especially because when I was running through the program, I only had like seven people in my class. It, you know, really instilled how to work with other people and you know how to kind of like make your end product you know be not only approachable to interact with but you know how does it actual how does it also function and i actually want to now answer a question that we get quite often so hope from facebook said how do companies maybe such as hers uh, hire current students, apparently um, you guys have made an impression. And so you'll want to just reach out to, career, to our career development department. They can actually set something up where you can be tuned in to when students are graduating or uh, work specifically with them to figure out who might be a really great fit for your team. And we can uh, certainly connect with you and get that all set up. Thank you for asking. Uh, another question from Facebook we had is from Sherry, and the question is, what advice do you have for today's high school students who are exploring these areas within tech? Any advice you might give? How about Vishan, do you want to kick it off? Uh, yeah, so uh, my advice is to, um, if you're really interested in tech, uh, think outside of the box. Um, there may not be a specific, you know, role that you 100% um, want to do like you technology is such a wide and varied like industry that you could, you could create like your own role um, and special don't be afraid to, you know, think outside the box and explore different avenues like there's so many options and, and so many different places that do so many different things so um, the sky's the limit, honestly. I love that. What do you think, Haifa? <laughs> you know how passionate about this yes. stuff. <laughs> I would say um, if you want to have um, uh, high schoolers look, get interested into the tech, for me, I would say start by having them maybe join uh, programming clubs, uh, robotics clubs, uh, maybe try to even like if they're gamers, maybe have them play and modify the games, program within the game and see how that goes. Um, that actually like, uh, I know a, a bunch of our students, this is how they got into the field by being gamers early and then um, wanting to modify the game um, and adding extra features to the games. Um, but if they are in the high school, again, robotics uh, clubs, programming clubs, AP classes, um, any some kind of organization, if they are, um, uh, I mean, um, uh, female students, female high school students, maybe look for local organizations um, that have, um, there are lots of local organizations that have um, either weekly or monthly events to get high school students to try either AR or VR or even gaming or programming to get them to do things 
and uh, get into the field. I don't know, Holly, if you have, if I'm missing anything. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on this and they probably stem all the way back to kindergarten, but I think, uh, I was um, educating on high school. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm like now taking it back to kinder. Um, I think the challenge in education that we have is so much is teaching to the test now that we don't, as many of these wonderful women have said today, they had to learn how to learn. And we don't teach kids how to learn anymore. We pretty much say, how do you, what's the answer? You know, it's from A to B. There's, there's not that process that they understand. And that's really important. So problem solving is so critical. And I think the more that you can challenge students with solving different types of problems will help them when it comes to programming and some of these other things that are critical components for joining these different tech programs. So um, it's a it's a long effort, I think, but there there's hope, right? It's just we've got to try to build in more of these 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 questions that can't always be answered very easily and being okay with failure because i think that there is so much to be learned from failing you just learned what didn't do what didn't get you the right answer that time so i think we have to be okay with that and celebrate failure and keep going so um, i know a lot of that is built into how we do programs at full sale um, but those are some of the things that i that's a big soapbox i will not stand too heavily on but um that's where i would start emily how about you um, so I would just want to say that if you are a high schooler and um, you maybe came across Full Sail or maybe took a like introduction to design classes or anything like that, my best advice would just be to spend some time in it. Um, there are tons and tons and tons of online resources to help kind of get your feet wet. Um, you know, like it was mentioned, there are always like organizations out in your community. Um, and if there aren't, then maybe start them. Um, there's nothing stopping you from start. I started a web design club because my school didn't have one and I wanted to see who else might be interested in talking about this stuff with me because as far as I knew, I was the only one. Um, so, but I would just really recommend like spend some of like spend one night, one Friday night, um, just taking a Udemy course or trying your hand at some JavaScript, CSS or whatever, or um, download uh, whatever game editors or I think Unity is one. Um, but just really like dip your feet in. You don't have to, you don't have to be good at it. Don't set your expectations very high for yourself because you're always going to be bad at it when you first start. Um, be nice to yourself in the process because it can be really discouraging, I think, um, to not maybe immediately understand a concept. But honestly, the more that you do it, the better you'll get at it. Um, so yeah, that's that would be my advice. That is some excellent advice. If you don't see what's out there that you think is there, create it. Um, Tatiana, how about you? Um, the hill that I will ultimately die on because I've currently been struggling with this issue myself is that a lot of the conversation that we have had has started from you know very childhood development places. Um, but a lot of it is you know like you're not too old and it's not too late to start having an interest in anything, and that's you know, I, I will die on that hill because I'm struggling with that entering my 30s right but like pretty soon. Um, I, you also kind of have to convince yourself that you're entitled to be in a space. You have to, you know, have this ability to convince yourself that you belong and that your voice matters and that what you say matters and what you do matters. Like it's a lot of convincing trying to get yourself out there to you know, always put yourself to the test and to the, be the best. And, you know, with working in an industry like technology, it's constantly changing and you have to constantly keep up with it. And it does become overwhelming, especially when, you know, you kind of like take a break from it or take a step back. And then suddenly, you know, in the tech world, it's like 10 years have happened in a matter of six months. And, you know, anything that, you know, any anything could like really happen. Like, look at the pandemic right now, um, how that has had to change everything and has changed, you know, the way that teams work together and the ethos that, you know, teams, you know, need to have in order to function and work. And, you know, the last piece of advice, which is something that um, the person I mentioned before, uh, Joseph, mentioned is that when you're doing an interview, it is your opportunity to interview the company yourself. You know, the business is trying to understand how you work and how you will work with their team. But for you, you are interviewing the business to see if you like them, to see if they will be a good fit for you. 
And that's kind of one of the more important lessons that I've learned, especially going through all my interviews and, you know, looking for jobs. That is some incredible advice. And just in that vein, I also think it, right now, giving yourself grace and giving everyone around you some grace, because I feel like we all need a little more grace right now with everything going on. And with that, we are at the hour already. I am sad because Dr. Mamar and I had an enormous amount of questions to ask, and we did not get to many of them. Um, but it was so wonderful to have you all on here today. Um, if you enjoyed the webinar today, you can check out some of our other webinars from this past year, Protect Tuesday, which are at fullsale.edu slash Tech Tuesday. Dr. Mamar, did you have any final words you wanted to share? Just I wanted to thank our panelists, uh, Vashon, Tatiana, and Emily. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the great advice that you gave today and the great insights. And um, I am personally so proud of our Full Sail graduates and everything that you're, you're doing. And um, yeah, for everyone who's listening, women succeed in tech, so really succeed in tech. So please join. <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks everyone.